All right, Active Pipe community. Um, here I am now with uh, Josh Fegan. Um, I'm sure you guys all know him. He's uh, one of the industry's best uh, trainers across Australia and, and the globe, actually. So I kind of wanted to get some insights off Josh on on uh, on what's happening and, and sort of get a sense of what, how he's feeling about the current climate. And, hey, Josh, and welcome, and thanks for, thanks for jumping on. Hey, Ash, it's um, awesome to be here. You know, uh, what an extraordinary set of circumstances that we find ourselves in, right? And I think that, you know, every single business has had to rapidly adapt. Um, if you had told me in January that I'd be in a situation that I couldn't have uh, people in a training room or I couldn't be uh, travelling to do work in New Zealand or um, any of those types of countries, it, um, I would have said that you were crazy. But you know what? It's, it's a new world. And, and I always just think that one of my favourite quotes is, um, you know, you can't stop the waves but you can learn to surf. And I think that like, you know, we have got a certainly a huge amount of waves um, coming at us. And you know, what I'm really amazed about is just seeing how quickly and how agile the real estate agents that we're working with, you know, um, uh, are actually adapting to using technology to be able to serve, you know, sellers and buyers alike and tenants and landlords to be able to produce some, you know, the results they desire. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's been a, a huge change, I think for everyone, including, you know, prop tech, providers like ourselves um i think it's going to be going to be a huge change over the next particularly 60 to 90 days um you know what we're what we're seeing in the market you know in in the last few weeks you know interest rates are at an all-time low i mean even as recent as the last two weeks the property market performance was still quite strong um yeah we sent an email out to our users last week and just asked them how you know how is COVID 19 impacting your business and you know how can we help um, and we were flooded with responses. We had like, you know, 560 real estate agents come back to us to tell us, you know, what they thought of it. And, you know, the sentiment was surprisingly positive. Um, you know, more than anything, the responses kind of demonstrated the attitude of, of resilience and determination to succeed through this, right? Um, you know, Josh, you know, you work with agents day to day. Um, you know, what's your, what are you hearing uh, in the market from, from agents? Well, I think that there's, there's some really interesting things is that like you're going to get like this initial shock and awe, you know, from the media, but after that, you kind of get into a period of what they call normalization, you know, and like, uh, and I think that like, you know, it's just normal, like we still wake up every day and we still have a life to get on with living. And I think that that's a really important part to think, you know, even back in, you know, the world wars, like, you know, they just got used to being, you know, bombs happening every day. And after a while, you know, the bomb stopped and that meant the war was over. And I think that this is exactly the same thing is that, you know, once we're past the initial set of shocks and reactions, then we kind of move into actually being as really pragmatic as we can be. And I think, you know, for what, what really good agents are doing is, is realising that they have, a, they have a duty of care in a number of areas. And the first one is really about mitigating risk. You know, any property that you've um, already sold that's marching through until settlement day, like that is a really important one to make sure that both the buyer and the seller are going to complete. So that's really about getting on the phone, ringing each of your sellers and just saying, hey, I just want to check everything's okay with you guys you know, checking with the buyers that have bought it and say, look, I just want to make sure everything's okay with you and anything that we need to know. Because if there is a situation that maybe there's been a change of employment or that they won't be able to complete on the transaction, it's better to know early rather than late. Uh, one of our clients um, in Sydney um, rang one of his clients and asked that question that, that that client had actually unfortunately lost their job. Uh, they've now made the decision to not proceed on a transaction at $6.5 million. And so they'll be handy, they'll be literally forfeiting at a positive 650000 um, yeah. But the great news, you know, for the seller is, is that the agent's been able to find um, the underbidder in that particular situation who is um, now um, prepared to move forward and, and they've sold the property again. And so this is a really important part. So the first key part is mitigating risk. The second thing is, is to realise that um, our seller work is massively important. And I think that, you know, pipelines actually have never been so choppy. You know, you say to someone, do you want to sell today? They say no. And tomorrow they say yes. And that's because it's a highly emotional period for all. And, you know, there's a, there's a whole range of things that are rapidly changing. We know that the, the government has, has gone in and APRA have had conversations with all of the banks as well, that if you need to put your home loan on pause, you can do that. And the way that that happens is simply ring them up, say, look, I'd like to put my home loan on pause for six months. They say, yes, they send you a one page document. You just sign that off. And then what actually happens is that there's no repayments for six months. At the end of the six month period, um, when you then come back on to normal payments again, you do have a slightly higher interest rate and that slightly higher interest rate will actually uh, cover the interest over that six month period that you didn't pay. So that's how that works. It's available to everyone inside of the Australian community. Um, the, the government you know, pumped in close to $105 billion 
you know, through the RBA into giving the banks cash to lend out. So that the banks certainly have no issues around that. Now, the other thing I would also say that as a part of that, that if you are a buyer and even if you've got um, pre-approval, it is worthwhile just calling back to the bank to confirm that pre-approval before the buyer commits on a contract. And the reason why that's important is that the bank just wants to confirm that your employment status hasn't changed, you know, since you actually got that approval. So that's a, that's a really normal thing as a part of that. You know, in all markets, you'll find people that are opportunistic and people that are forced to do transactions. And I think that at a buying level, you know, there's plenty of people that are, that are out and about that are saying, hey, look, I, I still want to do a transaction because I've already sold my house. You know, in addition to that, we've also got people that want to buy. We had four people on the lower North Shore of Sydney, um, you know, they're in a position that they have purchased sight unseen um, here in Australia um, over the course of the last week, purely because they get a currency gain, you know, so that they're, they're basing off the Australian dollar versus what's happening in international markets. So there, there are some things on that. At that next level is then saying at a buyer level, you've got to really find out who the people are. And that's where I think, you know, now that we can't do open for inspections and we're a private appointment driven, you know, anyone who's opening emails, anyone who's actually clicking on properties, to me, they're as good as an open for inspection attendee at this point, because, you know, if they're still interested in doing that, and you know, you can see that intent, what the customer's doing, it's a really important conversation. Yeah, I think there'll be, you know, a radical um, transformation in the real estate ecosystem to digital from this. I think, you know, from our perspective, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of looking at it like I think, I think it may accelerate two, maybe three, maybe even four years in advance pretty quickly. Um, from a, from a digital standpoint, um, yeah. and Josh, and I think there's there's oh, lots sorry. of technologies. Ash, there's lots of technologies. Ash, I think that people have had to adopt. You know, signing agency agreements, signing up contracts. You know, payment of deposits, online auctions. You know, um, I've now got sales teams. You know, right the way around the country that are in a position that they're doing a Zoom meeting at the start of every day, and they're doing a Zoom meeting every day at three o'clock. And the amount of communication that's actually happening in these progressive organisations is fundamentally absolutely amazing. And you know, I think that you know, it, it will never be the same. And I think that's a really important part for people to remember. There is a way that we sold real estate before this thing turned up. There is a way that we will do real estate transactions whilst it is around. And then there is a way that we will do real estate transactions into the future. And I think that that's important to know is just that, you know, there, there's certainly people that are in that. We've also got some clients that, that had to adapt because, you know, they've got properties that need to be sold as a part of court orders or things that are already you know, happening in terms of some foreclosures or, you know, banking possession type stuff, which was happening well before, you know, this thing turned up. And so um, those court orders are still in play and they need to happen. And so you need to innovate and find a way to make that occur. Yeah, got it. Makes sense. And I guess, you know, you're right about that kind of working remote. I mean, we've got a team of 70 working remote and I think, you know, I've spent a good part of the last week um, you know, spending time with people, you know, more time with, with team members, in fact, uh, across, you know, platforms like Zoom and, and Google Hangout. So, yeah, yeah I think the, the big same thing goes for us as a business. I think the big thing there is, is that just don't let anyone in your team have any social isolation. You know, like there's so much good work that can be happening. And I know that even for a number of our New Zealand clients, that even though, um, you know, they're in a position that they've got a, a 28 day period where they're, they're not leaving houses and stuff, there's still plenty of things that they're doing in terms of getting on the phone, communicating with people, still sending out their weekly email about these things and things that they're doing and making transactions happen. And the big lesson for them is, is that, you know, they, they said to me that, you know, just prior to their lockdown, that it was akin to Christmas Eve, you know, the night before, it was unbelievable to see the number of transactions that actually happened in such a short period of time. So this really is about, you know, preserving and building really good quality pipelines looking at, you know, what are the people that are doing in the offline world and what are people doing in the online world so that, you know, when things do open back up and we resume to some level of normality for, you know, in that market in New Zealand and you know, certainly in Australia, that when we start to get back to some more normal life, knowing who the people are that want to do a transaction is going to be the most important part. And I think that, you know, first of all, you know, there's denial. Second of all, you're getting to crisis management. Third of all, you start to get into planning and fourth, you start to get, you know, really clear about thinking about the future. And I think that that's, you know, really what's happening here is, is that we're now starting to see, you know, a new wave of calm because people are actually starting to say, okay, well, what does the future look like? And this, you know, every day when there's a government announcement, you kind of go, hey, what, how does that affect us? And I think it's really important to stay agile and be in a position that you can innovate. Yeah, got it. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And Josh, you know, you, you make a business out of developing high performance agents. Um, you know, what mindsets and strategy should an agent be taking during this time to continue to convert listings, you know, build relations, 
relationships and then you know generate growth for their business coming out of the the COVID nineteen period. Yeah, actually, I think that like you know the, the the most important part is is that you know the Viktor Frankl one you know from a man's search for meaning and he says like at the end of the day the thing that gets you through really tough periods is number one being really grateful for what it is that you have and number two being in a position that you always have to have something to look forward to and you know how good is it going to be the first day that you can go down to the pub and get a beer with your mates you know or go and get a dinner and take your family out like you know like you just got to look forward to yeah. those moments in life and realize that you know we're in this position together in terms of mindsets um i i, I tend to think about strategic planning this way the first level in strategic planning is, is that, you know, you know everything that's happening, you know how to play the game and you're very good at it. So, you know, we know how to auction the house, we know how to do open houses, we knew what to do back in that era. And for me, you know, I knew how to do my event, you know, I knew how to get 200 people to a blueprint in Sydney, you know, like that was a, a great formula and we ran it for 13 years. And then the second level in strategic planning is that something happens and then you need to adapt. And so about 18 or so months in the Australian marketplace, you know, we saw prices rapidly decline, you know, as it got to the top of the cycle, you know, for six or seven weeks, we we're trying to figure out what was going on. All of a sudden we had to go into, you know, price reduction dialogue, which we, you know, a lot of agents had never learned over the course of the five years that they'd been in the industry, you know, so we had to adapt pretty rapidly to that. Level three in strategic thinking is, is that all of a sudden there's a, a massive uncertainty that no one ever knew about and you've got to kind of react to that. So, classic example of that is, is that about four or so years ago I landed into London and I got this text message from a, from a mate and he said did you see what's happened in the referendum around Brexit and I was like no what's Brexit you know and he's like oh no like literally um, the UK is leaving the EU and I was like what and then like literally I looked down and the next four messages every single piece of work that I was booked to do that week in London got cancelled effective immediate and I'm still yeah. haven't even left the terminal at Heathrow and I'm thinking, Hey, what do I do? And this was, it's just mad. And, you know, um, only now I've actually got clarification about that some four years later. So, and then you move into stage four strategic planning, which is, is that literally everything is uncertain. There are no rules. There are no laws. There is nothing that you can be clear about. So literally you have to wake up and find out what the conditions of the day are. So the mindsets of really good high performing agents are, is they say, well, what can I do? And I love that question. What can I do today? You know, and, and how do I actually go and do that? And then the, then the secondary part in their mindset is to say, okay, well, what am I doing to make sure that my clients who want to sell, sell, and my clients who want to buy, buy? And I think that this is a, an incredible thing because what we're learning out of what's happened in the UK, what we're learning about what's happening inside of New Zealand is, is that that's where people are saying that, you know, it's deeper and better quality connections. It's more relevant communications. It's actually being in a position that you're, you're on the phone and, and using digital tools, you know, like Zoom and FaceTime and all that sort of stuff to make sure that you're still connecting with people. And, you know, what I always say, it's what you do when things um, are, are quiet that makes all the difference when things get busy. And, you know, whether or not this is a quiet period for agents or whether or not it's an exceptional period, people will remember the relationships. And this is the thing that, you know, we're doing as a company as well is just saying, hey, man, just help as many people as you can. Be human first and be a real estate in second. So I think dialogue ash has changed. Like you're not yeah. like I'm in your street today doing an appraisal or here's the DL or, you know, like literally do you want me to come out? I think a lot of that dialogue now is about being human. So sample call, hey, Ash, it's Josh. I just got to give you a quick call. I don't want to check in and see how are things with you guys. Is there anything I can do to help and assist? And literally just stop at that point and let yeah. the customer talk. And naturally... Yeah. If buying is opportunistic, if selling is opportunistic, if you know if they're in a position that they want to hold and they need information about how to put their home loan on hold, like if that's where you play in terms of the strategic advisory space as an agent, I think that you will come out of this um, and you'll still market share like there's no tomorrow when we resume to some level of normality, you know, uh, in doing what we do as great agents. Yeah, I think being authentic and genuinely wanting to help is is going to be super important for for uh, keeping in touch with your community at the moment, right? Yeah, I think that, you know, don't panic. Like, I mean, to say yeah. one of the things like, you know, if, if you've got to change what you put inside of, you know, your, your, any of your marketing, your email that goes out or what you're putting on social, well, make sure that your content is really palatable. I don't know about you, but I, I had nearly every single corporation in the world send me an email over the last week to tell me how they're dealing with this, you know, coronavirus. And it's like, well, I don't even know you. I don't have a relationship with you. I probably don't need to know that. So what I think is important is that get creative in these situations and that that creativity is a really important part we've seen great clients um you know they've been in a position where they're now holding zoom meetings you know as as a collective for every single one of their landlords you know to talk to them about the things that are happening inside of the landlord and property management space we're saying that you know um that literally we're moving to this space of productivity where you know people are now taking this opportunity to clean up that database and to 
get those extra email addresses and to get on the phone and to speak with people and ring every single one of those past clients and get past the excuses. I think for me, I, I've pretty much just um, switched the news off. I have a quick review of it to see if there's anything pertinent in relation to real estate. But apart from that, I just get back into Josh Vegan production mode, which is help as many people as I can and stay really focused on that. And I think that, you know, to be a really good quality agent, you know, there were people only three or four weeks ago that were missing out on properties at auction and getting quite unhappy about that, that are probably now in a position going, well, hey, what should we do? And in times of uncertainty, people need a really certain and a firm voice. And so for me, staying very calm, staying pragmatic, staying very systematic is a really important part. And, you know, that means that you've got to look after yourself. So, you know, going for a walk or going for a run or, you know, being in a position that you can do some exercise at home and starting the day at the same time every day. And, you know, if you're used to, to doing marketing, doing marketing the same way that you always have. So for us, our coaching tips will continue. For us, our podcast with Alexander will continue. Like all of that sort of stuff stays the same. We'll make a couple of little adjustments, but if people are used to getting a daily email, we've actually found our daily email read rates have absolutely gone through the roof over this period because people are looking for firm advice. So if that means yep. that you need to get in and change the email that you're sending to sellers or to buyers and saying, hey, guys, here are some options and some things that you need to be aware of in the current climate. So that might be that you know now you're doing private appointments. It might be that now you're doing online auctions. It might be that now you're in a position that you're moving more to a for sale type campaign. But you know we're still selling property and showing how that's being done. And I think that overused terms like business as unusual or business as usual, like we're getting pretty tired of that stuff pretty quickly. So what I think is important is just to keep fresh and keep innovative. So, you know, that's to me that this is what I'd be doing now, or this is what you need to know and, and, and use your templates to be highly successful so that, you know, you can, you can adapt, you can adapt that. And it might not be the weekly listings update. Maybe that, that headline isn't actually important these days. Maybe got to change it to say, Hey, um, here are some things to dream of. And sitting inside of that might be some properties that they might be able to buy, you know, when they're able to, to, to go and do that, depending on where you are. Because, you know, when we're recording this today, you know, there's lots of things that are shifting in, at a global perspective. Oh, yeah. And it's shifting daily, right? Uh, even by the hour in some cases. But, um, uh, Josh, um, you know, what can agents be doing specifically to kind of reassure sellers now, given that, you know, open houses and auctions are restricted? You know, uh, what kind of what kind of content do you think would be relevant right now? I think you the know. big thing is, is just to explain to people that, you know, a lot of people have, uh, have fear, you know, a lot of irrational fear about, so what does the process look like? And, you know, um, without open for inspections and without auctions, I mean, that's pretty much what we were doing in the country or regional Australia for years, you know, where I grew up in my foundation as an agent, you know, private appointments and for sales, a very normal process. Um, the only difference is I don't ever remember turning up, um, you know, uh, cleaning down all the hard surfaces, you know, before and after the open for inspection and using a lot of hand sanitizer. But, you know, that's about the only thing that has adapted. So when you're working with sellers, what I would be saying is, is that it's a very normal way of selling real estate. I think I saw a statistic that it was something like only 11% of the real estate transactions in Australia were actually done by the auction method. You know, so it should give you some confidence that the bulk of Australian transactions have always been done by for sale in any case. And auctions aren't precluded because you can do an online auction and there's plenty of platforms that are available, you know, inside of the prop tech sector to be able to handle that. Um, you know, how we used to handle a bidder that couldn't be there is that we used to do over the phone bidding, Ash. So, you know, it's not like you need to rush out and get yeah. a, a completely different platform now. It's just understanding that, you know, your capabilities and there's plenty of tech platforms as well on being able to sign agency agreements and to be able to sign contracts of sale and all of those types of things, um, you know, as a part of that. What I would say to you, to reassure a seller, um, it's very much a personal communication. So, you know, hi, Ash. Um, it's, uh, I know that we find ourselves in an extraordinary set of circumstances. And what I wanted to let you know is, is that if you were considering a sale, it is definitely still possible. Here are some of the things that, you know, people are doing in order to be able to go and to sell their property. Uh, the new way that we're doing real estate is that everything is done by private appointment. The new way that we're doing real estate is that we're launching properties available off market, you know, before we actually go to launch it necessarily on the major portals. The new way that we're doing real estate is that once we've got some offers, we can make some decisions about what we might be doing and how we take it to market. And there's different quoting legislation, but given that if the majority are going for sale or an online auction, um, you, you'll have to quote whatever is appropriate for your particular state or territory. But I think that what is important is, is that when, you know, then we're just going to take people through. And what a lot of my agents are doing is they're saying, well, I'm still going to keep the open times in my diary and in my head and if with my owner. And if I get an inquiry from a buyer who wants to buy, then I will arrange a private appointment that will be at that time in my diary. So I'll book one in at 10 o'clock. And if another buyer wants to come and inspect that property, I'll book them in at 10, 15. 
you know, so I'm still uh, aiming to be there, but I'm just not going to be putting out the open boards and the open flag and any of those things. I just want to make sure that I can do a private appointment if someone has booked in. Now, if they haven't booked in, then um, I'll allow my owners just to continue quiet enjoyment of the property. Um, I think what is important here, Ash, is also to understand that there might be some properties that are impacted, particularly those that have any tenants in them, because yeah. if it is a tenanted property that you're selling, then those tenants may be very risk averse to having people come in. And you can certainly understand that. And they are at full right to have quiet enjoyment of the property. You know, that is a conversation with that tenant in that particular case. And certainly it is a conversation with the landlord about how, how they, if they still want to proceed or not or, and, and, and or, um, are they open to actually being have private appointments? And if they're not, that's unfortunately, that's, that's going to be one of the victims of our current set of circumstances. But, you know, the tenant might be, um, you know, depending on the range of packages that come forward in time, they might be interested in a rent, rent re reduction or a rent relief period from that landlord. And you might find them accommodating, you know, if we're following some really good um, quality procedures. So whatever the procedures are of the day, you know, limiting in terms of number of people per square meterage or whatever, it might be one party only. Um, you know, certainly, so it might be a husband and a wife with a child. So it might be a maximum of three people at any private appointment that you're doing. So it's, you know, and keep your hands in your pockets. Like, you know, all of that sort of stuff, you know, um, is a really important part. I think, Ash, this is probably the only time that you can wear a latex glove at work and not be considered a little <laughs> bit strange in the real estate industry. So <laughs> Yeah, I'd have yeah. to agree there. I have to agree there, Josh. Um, mate, just, you know, another another question, I guess, around... Yeah, you know, we, we saw in China the the property transactions almost halted. You know, it came to came to zero. You know, came down to zero yeah. for for a period when they were in lockdown. Um, how are you feeling? You know, to us it kind of feels like there's this this storm brewing, and um, you know we're hearing a lot of agencies talk about you know the concerns around you know property transactions coming to a halt. Obviously, you know people need liquidity, so and probably more so now than ever. Um, so how do you feel about kind of the, the property transaction numbers um, and, and kind of, you know, the volume of properties that might come to market post what we might call, if we call it COVID-19, the storm, you know, post, post this period? Um, what, what are your thoughts around, around, you know, property transaction numbers and what do you think the, the ecosystem is going to potentially look like um, after the next sort of, you know, 30, 60, 90 days? Yeah, so this is a really good one. Um, I know uh, Kerry Smith, the CEO of Waywide over in New Zealand, um, I was lucky enough to be in a presentation that he was giving and it was um, a very informative conversation that literally what we've kind of seen over there, if we look at the New Zealand model, is, is that there's kind of a bit of a three-stage shutdown for them. So the first one was all around, you know, everything related to hospitality and all the above. The second stage was then any additional type gatherings and all of those things. And then the third one was that then cutting off all the balance of services. So what actually happens is that you kind of get people out, get them away from spending money, get them out of the retail and then the services line, then, then your economy goes to a flat line and then it opens up. And so when it opens up, the first one to actually open up is, um, all, of the, is all the services. The second one after that is then a bit of feel-good retail. And then the third one after that is then back into the hospitality stuff and take the family out for dinner. So whichever industries are the, fir uh, are the, uh, whichever industries are the last to close are the first ones to open. So... From my perspective, you know, and you can see why that would be the case, right? Um, yeah. You know, if you are able to be slightly comedic or slightly humorous at this particular time, and that's the only way I'm kind of getting through. Mate, can you imagine the number of babies that are going to be made um, over this particular period? Can you imagine um, the number of divorces oh, yeah. that are actually going to happen over this period? And, and unfortunately, as a natural course of life, um, you know, there'll be some deceased estates and things that will happen. And there'll probably be some couples that will get together, you know, when they're forced into 14 days of isolation, if that happens or whatever it is of the day. So what I do know, yeah, what I do yeah. know, though, is that like life goes on and there'll be some people that just won't be able to mentally deal with, you know, the financial pressure, regardless of whether or not home loans are on hold or whatever, they'll just want to get a tip out of assets there'll be other people that will see it as an incredible opportunity to get in and to buy assets. And so, you know, every market makes a market and, you know, whether or not there's a hiatus for a week or two weeks or a month or six weeks or even six months, can I tell you um, how much is human, a human's going to enjoy getting back to some normality of life when those things happen. So what I would be saying is, is that, you know, you've got to be really careful trying to, you know, put all of these contingencies in play because you're making those contingencies based on a set of criteria. So, you know, I thought, for example, that a lot of people would be forced to sell if they lost jobs. Then I then um, had to change and reverse my decision on that because a week later they said, oh, by the way, you can put your home loan on pause. And yeah. so that, that then meant, well, maybe they don't have to sell. So there wasn't as many people rushing the market. So um, I'm being very pragmatic. I am 
uh, keeping as, as much as possible um, my business running as, as per usual with my people and my staff and doing all of those pragmatic conversations. And, you know, and having important ones that if they find that their workload is substantially changing, then we might, you know, they might use some holiday leave and stuff as well. But we're not reacting too quickly. What I think you will see is, is that when this thing fires, it will fire like there's no tomorrow. And so volumes will return. There is no doubt to that because governments around the world have done this to us and governments around the world will be there to support us on the way out because they need the economy going. And I know certainly the state, state uh, all the states were very, you know, very keen for us to return to public transactions because that good old stamp duty revenue is a major, major yeah. revenue driver for them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And Josh, just probably my last question would be around uh, a, a, a real estate agent or agency being relevant, you know, in a time where there are very little properties on the market. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the content strategies or, um, you know, communication styles that, that you think agents will be taking if there's, if there's limited property to be able to promote or, or, or push out to their network? Yeah, I think that you've got to be really open to that. I'm not sure that there is a limitation on property quite yet. And why I'd say there's, I think there's a massive rise in people using off market. I think that your content at an off market level is really important. If you've got a vendor that's thinking about selling and is cautious about the, you know, the issues and challenges of the day, then certainly, you know, you've got to go with that. Um, whatever state or territory in, you might need to get certain documentation at a legal level prepared. Section 32 in Victoria, for example, a contract of sale here in New South Wales. Um, what you'd want to do is get photos on that property, get your virtual tours on that property, the 3D floor plans, you know, make sure that you've got everything and say to them, look guys, let's just get prepared. And that way that if things do change and you need to make a change, then then let's go and have a conversation around that. And I think that that's where I'd be going with it. I think that, you know, don't don't wish that you're in a position that you're not in today. Play play the day with what's directly in front of you. Um, because I, I think that like there's, there's plenty of people that get nervous and then the next day it's all calm again. And so, yeah. you know, just stay really focused on prospecting, you know, in and, and that's about being a human first. And so my marketing would be, picking up the phone and making sure that I've got my consistent weekly email going out and, 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 and a consistent posting strategy on social. But again, like we used to plan our social a week in advance. We're now doing our social every day. You know, I just think that that's the important part. We've got our email going out every day. You know, that's what we've always done. I think, you know, for an agent, you should at least be doing that every week. And that might be, you know, about finding needs and requirements. It might be, you know, remember when, you know, it might be some things there. Because people are, are going to home and, and what we're finding in the UK environment they're looking for something to do. Yeah. To do. Yeah. You know, and so this is a really important part. So, you know, there's nothing stopping you interviewing great architects or, you know, people that, are, that have owned incredible properties or to reminisce on, on some really good stuff that's actually happened because people will really engage you. But to me, I'm just picking up the phone. I mean, every client that's ever done a transaction with me. And, and the more that I do that, I think that, you know, you'll find incredible results. And, you know, as an agent, everything's about mindset, you know, and I, I think that, you know, that's a, that's a really important point in terms of, you know, the transformation of where things are kind of at, because the more that we get that right, you know, the better things will be. And I read a quote this morning that I thought was particularly good. You know, there are decades where nothing happens. And then there are weeks where decades happen. You know, and I just think that like, yeah, this is one of those weeks where like a decade of transformation has occurred in the real estate industry and that we have to get very, very good at digital and we need to get really good at understanding our tools. And I, I, I'm sure you're probably seeing it, but, in particularly in, in even our Josh Vegan digital environment, I've never had so many people go, oh, mate, can we get into that training and what does that look like? And are you doing this emergency podcast? And we can, we, can we listen to that? And, and I think that's a really important part to, you know, just understand that people really want to understand how you're working and what you're doing and how you can help them, you know, be a helper yeah. first. And that, that, I think that just sets you up for incredible levels of success. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, having a strategy right now is, 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 is really difficult because everything changes by the day. So, you know, I can resonate with what you said there about, you know, pulling your marketing strategy back to day by day rather than, you know, planning it forward, you know, planning it ahead. But it's also an opportunity to do some housekeeping as well around, you know, database cleaning and, and you know, getting, getting on top of those things before, um, before it all starts to pick up again. Um, I think Josh, that's, a, that's Josh. just a good one, though, that when you're ringing through and you're talking to your market appraisers and saying, hey, what do you want to do? Oh, look, we're not going to do anything. Or when you're talking to a buyer, say, hey, we're not going to do anything. Well, Ash, would it be okay if I still keep you on our weekly update, you know, just <clears throat> for any off-market listings or things that might be happening from time to time? If they say yes to that, that's awesome. If you then find in terms of your reporting that they are then clicking, then they're actually ready to do something again. And this is what I like. I, I need people to be very, very cautious that you just don't, kill the opportunity 
when yeah. like people are, are changing so much, learn how to use those digital tools so that you can get better quality reporting to know what to do next. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Josh, uh, what can I say? Thanks for, thanks for jumping on. And I'm sure the active pipe community will be appreciative of, of, of your time and it'd be great to get your insights on all of this. And we'll be um, touching base with uh, industry experts over the next few months and, and trying to give our uh, community of users uh, insights into, into what's happening. So um, thank, thank you very much for your time. Excellent. Thanks, Ash. Great to be a part of it. Cheers.